What's up hobby friends, my name is Casey and this is eBay Miniature Rescues. Today, it is finally time to say goodbye to a very large project. I've been working for what seems like forever on a single army, playable in Warhammer Age of Sigmar. The idea, of course, was to take a relatively inexpensive used army and rescue it. Let's go back in time for a minute and check out where this army came from. For that, we need to start with the Warhammer 40,000 rulebook from way back in 1998. This is my original copy, and it's still in pretty good shape. This brings back a lot of memories, just starting to paint, getting into tabletop games, and a lot of it, this last page. That's a lot of what I remember from this book. The book opens perfectly on this one page, and that's because it had all of the charts on it. These were the numbers that we needed to play. We didn't really know anything else about the game, but this was important. We're gonna flip through the book to the colored areas, the only colored pages in this book, and take a look at some of the older armies. Here we go. This is probably the first time I saw a Bloodthirster. I remember seeing this model and trying to picture what it did, how big it was, how heavy it was. A lot of models back then were only available in metal. Little did I know it would only take 23 years to actually find out. It's pretty heavy. Here's another example. This was the last codex that I bought before pretty much giving up on Warhammer. I wanted this army so badly, but part of that was because the pictures told such a good story. Good and evil fighting it out in the far future of the 41st millennium. Grand battles that I wanted to reenact on the table and paint. Moving to a more modern aesthetic, here's a preview White Dwarf magazine that I got at, I think, a Comic-Con, right before Age of Sigmar actually came out. It has this insane picture of a corn army. The overwhelming red tide was cemented into my mind, and someday it would be mine. Oh yes, it would be mine. This is pretty much what got me back into the hobby. I played a test game at the con with a friend, and the next day we went to the Warhammer store, which also happened to open that day. Kinda crazy. Bringing us pretty much into a few months ago, when I was browsing eBay and came across what seemed to be a very large and impressive collection of corn models for 85 bucks. That's right, I bought almost all of these models for $85, and it was exactly what I was looking for. Tons of blood letters and a whole heap of blood crushers, and not an insignificant amount of blood warriors. In reality, a perfect place to start an army. Here's the thing though, the army was in pretty bad shape, and not because it was painted poorly, but because it was a project army. Someone had begun to strip this army in the hopes that they would eventually be able to bring it back to its full glory, but didn't quite get all the way through it. The end result of that is a ton of work and a lot more than I had originally anticipated. So I began working on the models. I separated each type and decided I would do a video for each unit within the army. After all, these models were in desperate need of a rescue. And that's, well, that's why we're here, right? Let's start with the Bloodthirster. That was the first thing I started to work on. Taking a mangled Bloodthirster like we saw in that 40K rulebook and fixing it up. I found this model for something like $15 on eBay. I can't really remember, but I know it was an awesome deal. And I knew with a little bit of 3D printing, we could pretty much bring this model back to life. Next up were the blood letters. The blood letters were a bit trickier. There was quite a bit of paint still left on these guys, and they all had to go back into a bath to get them down to plastic. Once they were stripped down, I went through and glued the broken models back together and got them painted. I used the same paint scheme as the Bloodthirster, so it made it easy to batch out 70 of these guys in no time. The Blood Crushers. 
Now out of all of the models, these were by far in the best shape. A couple of the metal ones had been stripped, but a majority of them were left pretty intact. And when I went to strip them, it made it a lot easier to manage as an overall project. I also left the final color choice up to you guys. So in the end, the overwhelming majority was for the secret weapon workup of tire black rubber and rubber highlight, giving these models a ton of great contrast with the reds and bringing in that cold mechanical feel for the mounts. The really interesting thing about these models in particular is that they were all missing their riders. I was able to use an extra unit of blood letters posed in just the right way to make these guys work and in the end they turned out to be some of my favorite models in the bunch. Blood Warriors. The Blood Warriors presented the most amount of work. I started with a set of 10, but there were some problems with the plastic. I stripped the models, but unfortunately more than a few of them were unsalvageable, and I just couldn't bring myself to include them in the army. So I replaced the point cost with more blood letters, which really is totally fine. The Blood Warriors were included in this army because they're really cool. So a five man squad is gonna have to do some serious work to keep that idea alive. Now there was one more Bloodthirster. The last piece of this army was actually a random purchase I made right in the middle of the whole project. I just happened upon another Bloodthirster for pretty much the same price as the other one. So of course I'm going to include that in the army. Two Bloodthirsters have to be better than one. I mean, come on. That brings us to a very interesting part of this project, something that I wasn't anticipating. After the last video went up, I got a comment on all of the other videos having to do with this army. It was from the seller that I bought this army from on eBay. The comment says that this army used to belong to a friend's son, who painted this army as his first. Unfortunately, he passed away. And the army was gifted to the seller. The seller had it for a while and planned on stripping and painting the army properly, but inevitably life happened and he had to put down the project. Eventually it ended up on eBay and on my desk. In all honesty, this really made me stop and think. How many models have I gotten off of eBay that carried a similar story? And what am I going to do about this army in particular? Well here's where I'm at. I kept one model from this army. A corn hero that needs some massive attention. But in order for me to proceed on this model, I need more information. If you know anything about this army or can get me into contact with someone who does, then I would like to paint this model and donate the proceeds to whichever charity the boy's parents would like. All of my contact info is in the description below. As far as the rest of the army, I feel that someone else would benefit much greater than I will from its existence. Being able to play through grand scenarios, creating new and exciting stories, and having fun with your friends. All of the things that this army absolutely deserves. I thought about this in my head for quite a bit. I really like the way that this army came out, but someone else will love it more and continue to add to its story. So I will be putting this army in its entirety back onto eBay. The price will start at the same price that I paid for all of it, which in this case was around 120 bucks. If you would like to support this channel beyond subscribing, that is a great way to do it. And if auctions aren't your thing, then I have a really cool Patreon with some really fun rewards. All the applicable links will be down in the description below, and thank you so much for your continued support. I really couldn't do this without you guys. Without anything further, here is the completed 2,000 points. Blades of Corn Army.
Thank you again for joining me on another miniature rescue. If you like something about this video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video.